Hi, this is Heidi from My Reading Life, and in this video I'll be ex talking about my progress in completing the 2017 Read Harder Challenge that's put together by the folks over at Book Riot, and I will link that challenge down below so you can check it out yourself, but there are 24 different prompts that you can complete that will allow you to expand your reading horizons and read more diversely. At this point in the year, I have completed 15 of the different challenges um, and I was inspired to make this video by watching the one that Rincy did over on her channel, Rincy Reads, and I will link that down below as well. Um, so I'm just going to go through quickly the books that I've read and the different prompts that they fulfill. Um, I don't have all of the books because some I consumed on audiobook and some I consumed as an ebook, and I, I have a few here in physical form that I will show. But otherwise, these are in no particular order, and I'm just going to quickly go through them. Um, so for a book about sports, I read You Will Know Me by Megan Abbott, which f meets the requirement because it's about gymnastics. Um, for a debut novel, I read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, and I would say at this point in the year, this book is my favorite book that I've read all year. It was a five-star read. It's amazing, and I would encourage everybody to read it. It is also uh, about a teenager who witnesses the shooting of her childhood best friend by a police officer, and her friend is African American, and the police officer is white, so it meets it. It talks about a lot of our current um, racial issues in just an excellent, very relatable, very authentic way. So definitely check that one out. For the prompt, um, a book about books, I read The Borrower by Rebecca Matt Mackay, which is about uh, a librarian helping a young boy to run away from an abusive um, home situation. Uh, for a book about an immigrant or an immigrant experience, I read Behold the Dreamers by Imbolo Mbue. That was an, another excellent book about an uh, uh, immigrant from Cameroon and his wife, and he gets a job as a chauffeur for an um, executive at uh, Lehman Brothers right at the time of the financial crisis in 2008 or 2009, and how that financial crisis impacts the immigrants that are working for the folks that are going through um, the downsizing. Um, for a travel memoir, I listened to A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson, which I've spoken about recently on this channel. Um, that is uh, the author's attempt to hike the Appalachian Trail with his friend Katz. Um, for a book that I've read before, I reread, I uh, actually listened to on audio, but reread Soulless by Gail Carriger, which is book one of the Parasol Protectorate series, which is a steampunk Victorian England uh, paranormal romance that has vampires and werewolves, and it's excellent. Um, for a book set within 100 miles of my location, I read a book called Freeman Cooper by William Hopkins. Um, I know the author's son, and this book was published in uh, 1970, and it's about a young man living on an island off the coast of Maine, and his mother dies, and it's how he uh, reacts to that, and it's about island life and community life in a small rural Maine island, um, and it was very much of its time, but also really weirdly relates to our current time, so that was a fun read. Um, for a fantasy novel, I read A Ship of Magic, uh, A Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy, which takes place in the uh, greater um, Elderlings realm, uh, Realm of the Elderlings series of books by this author. Um, and I've spoken about this on my channel before, but this is a fantasy that is uh, very much about uh, sailing and ships that have um, figureheads that are alive and the magic that surrounds that. Very, very good series. Um, for a book about war, I read A Long Way Gone, A Memoir of a Boy Soldier by Ishmael Bia. Bia. Um, and this is about a young boy in Sierra Leone in Africa who is driven from his home by the war. Um, and he's, 
he um, gets separated from his family and he's trying to survive and he actually gets uh, taken in uh, by a rebel group and he's forced to fight um, for them and how that impacts his life and how he eventually uh, is able to get away from them and, and start and try to recapture some kind of life after having been forced to be a boy soldier. Just heartbreaking read, but very, um, very good as well. For a YA or middle grade novel by an author that identifies as LGBTQ+, I read um, if, I were, if I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. This author is transgender and the novel is about a teenage, um, a teenage girl who's starting in a new school and she's trying to make friends and she has a boy that she's interested in but she's afraid that her secret is going to come out and her secret is that in her former school she was Andrew. Um, so that was, I read that on ebook. And then for a banned or frequently challenged book, I read Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley there, excuse me. Um, and this is dystopian, a future, uh, which I didn't really get, to be honest with you. Um, I read this towards the beginning of the year, and it didn't really leave much of an impression on me, and I didn't really like it, but I can say I read it. For a book in which a character of color goes on a spiritual journey, I read Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and I spoke about this in my last video. Um, I read this as an ebook. It is the fourth book I think I've read by this author, and absolutely my favorite. It's an amazing, amazing read about uh, a young girl who's growing up in an extremely religious family in Nigeria. And she has been very sheltered and she has a very domineering religious father and she ends up spending some time with her aunt who is um, a lot more in, uh, who follows a lot more of the traditional Igbo um, ways and cultural, um, cultural structures and it's about her and her brother and, and, and how being with their aunt impacts how they feel about what's going on in their home with their very uh, Christian uh, upbringing. Excellent, excellent book. Then for a LGBTQ plus romance, I read Will Grayson, Will Grayson by John Green and David Leviathan. And this is a book that's told in alternating perspectives, John Green writes one character's perspective, David Leviathan writes the other, and it's each of the characters is named Will Grayson, but they're very different um, characters. One Will is sort of brooding and depressed and emo, and the other Will is, is less so, but also <laughs> is very angsty. Um, but I did very much enjoy this story, there's a character in here, um, one of the Wills uh, has a relationship with a, a boy named um, Tiny Cooper and Tiny is a fabulous character. I really enjoyed this story and it's a, it's a, a fun quick read. So hi, you will notice that I look different and that is because the other video I was filming cut out, technical difficulties, blah blah blah. So I'm just going to quickly finish my list here of books that I've completed in the Book Riot 2017 Read Hard Challenge and move on. Okay, so for a collection of stories written by a woman, I finished Difficult Women by Roxane Gay. Um, I really like Roxane Gay's writing. I find it uh, very emotional. It's very difficult. Usually the topics are very difficult. Um, this book is no exception. Um, all of the stories deal with women who have to uh, deal with very traumatic experiences, whether that be kidnapping, rape, abuse, other things. Um, so, you know, trigger warnings and all that, but I found it very, uh, an emotional read and a very compelling one. And then the last one that I want to talk about is a book where all the POV characters are people of color. And for this prompt, I read, uh, Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. I listened to it on audio. It's very long. Um, it's, you know, an important, uh, classic in American literature. Uh, and I'm glad I read it. I, you know, I, I want to work my way through a lot of the classics. 
um, in American literature, but it was a difficult read. So that's it. That's where I'm at with the 2017 Book Riot Read Harder Challenge, and I will probably be back at the end of the year to talk about how I did overall. Talk to you later.